Hello, this is Julian with Cough Reviews, and today is part one of our updated American and Canadian Cough Roaster tier list. In celebration of hitting the 2,000 subscriber milestone, we'll be creating a new Cough Roaster tier list with some of the Cough Roasters featured on this channel over the last couple of years. Each of these Cough Roasters must meet one of two stipulations in order to make it onto this list. The first stipulation is that we must have at least two full bag reviews of their coffee on this channel, or the other stipulation is that they must have featured it in one of our previous Coffee Roaster tier lists, and we just wanted to update their placement on this tier list. So let's go over the categories on this tier list, beginning with the world class category. And a quick disclaimer that none of the Coffee Roasters on this tier list will be in that world class category, as that's usually reserved for the Coffee Roasters that I consider to be the absolute best in the entire world. And while there are some coffee roasters on this list that I consider to be exceptional, I don't think that they've necessarily reached that world-class category yet, but I would say that there are a couple here that I do have an eye out for that might reach that category one day. Next, we have the amazing category, and that is reserved for coffee roasters that I consider to be on the verge of reaching that world-class category. There may be one or two things away from reaching that status, but generally they're coffee roasters that I monitor pretty regularly and ones that I'm interested in purchasing and trying a lot of their coffees from. Next, we have the great category, and the great category is mostly for coffee roasters that I continuously monitor on a regular basis. So there are coffee roasters that I might check out here and there from time to time, or coffee roasters that I might find at local coffee shops that would usually catch my eye, and I just kind of want to take a glance and see what they have, and I'm a little bit more prone and likely to purchase coffees from them, given that I have had positive experiences from them in the past. The good category is reserved for coffee roasters that I would consider to be on the better side of things. They're not coffee roasters that I monitor too frequently, but whenever they do release something that catches my eye or interest, then I am a little bit more inclined to purchase from them given that I have had positive experiences from them in the past. The okay category is reserved for coffee roasters that I might not have necessarily had the best experiences with up to this point, which isn't to necessarily say that they're not necessarily a good coffee roaster, but just that my experiences with them have not been to the standard or expectation that I might have hoped for or the level of some of the other coffee roasters on this list. And last is not my cup, and that's typically reserved for coffee roasters that I feel like aren't necessarily in line with what I am looking for from a coffee roaster, which once again, it could just be that I haven't had the best experiences from them in the past, and that might be changed in the future. And of course, the last disclaimer I wanted to give before we start this tier list is that I consider all these coffee roasters to be definitely on the better side of things in general, as I don't have anything negative to say about any of them. It's just a very subjective list, and it's all based off of preferences. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start this first part, beginning with Bot's Coffee, which is based out of Whiting, Indiana. And the first thing I have to say about this coffee roaster is that we've actually only featured one of their coffees on this channel up to this point. But that being said, we are in the process of reviewing two additional of their coffees as well. And I purchased those coffees with the hopes that we would be able to get those reviewed before this tier list came out. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but I'm going to take those two coffees into consideration so that way I can have at least somewhat of a decent idea on where I want to place this coffee roaster. And this is where things are going to get tricky on this tier list. A lot of these coffee roasters are going to fall somewhere between the good and great category, and it's going to be up to me to kind of determine based off my experiences where I want to place them. And Bots is one of those coffee roasters as they have genuinely had some pretty positive experiences. Well, I've genuinely had some positive experiences with their coffees in the past. And they do tend to focus on a lot of pink per bone coffees, but outside of that, they've had a lot of wash processed coffees, which will definitely appeal to me. They do appear to be trending in the right direction as they become a bit more popular over the last couple of years, as so many more people are now discussing their coffee. And the first impression I had of them was, I would say, pretty solid. And the biggest issue I have with them is maybe some slight inconsistencies with some of the coffees that I have been brewing, as they have not necessarily been the most consistent coffees. Well, with that being said, I've generally had pretty positive experiences with the coffees that we've tried from them up to this point, and the reviews coming up of them are on the more positive side as well. Since I kind of mentioned, I was somewhere between the good and great category, and these two final coffees were going to determine where I was actually going to place them. And I think for right now, I do feel comfortable placing them in the great category as those experiences have been on the much more positive side of things. And I do think that there's a lot of potential within this coffee roaster. They do uh, purchase some very interesting coffees. 
All right, next up we have Kova, and Kova is based out of Portland, Oregon. This is the first coffee roaster that we are updating their placement from a previous coffee roaster tier list, as they were featured in our first ever coffee roaster tier list. And I believe we placed them in one of the higher categories, and I think it was a little bit of a different category back then, but it was the second highest category. And what I wanted to say about Kova is that I don't think that they've necessarily changed too much, but that's going to be a little bit of a theme with some of the coffee roasters in this tier list. And that's that coffee roasters that don't necessarily maybe adapt to some of the more modern times seem to fall behind ever so slightly. And that's kind of the case I felt with Kova as I generally have pretty positive experiences with them when I do visit their cafes out in Portland. But what I've noticed is that there hasn't necessarily been too much of a change with the coffees that they are offering over the years. And that can be good in certain aspects. And that of course being that they might not have necessarily skewed too heavily on the more processed coffees. But with that being said, these are coffees that I've had so many times over the years, and it's been a little unfortunate that they haven't had too many new things that have caught my interest. And for that reason, while I'm still enjoying their coffee, I wouldn't say that they're quite as good as what I once remembered, mostly because it's felt like they've been a little bit stagnant over the last couple of years. So I think that that could possibly change in the future, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and move them into the good category. All right. Next up, we have Flower Child out of Oakland, California. And this is one of the first coffee roasters on this tier list that actually came about um, very recently. By the time we created our last American Canadian coffee roaster tier list, I do not believe that uh, they were in operation yet. So that will make this a pretty fun placement on this tier list. And We've reviewed a couple of their coffees. We even did a blind taste test ranking of their coffee. And just like with Bots, I purchased a couple of their coffees in preparation for this tier list as I wanted to get a pretty good idea of where I wanted to place them on this tier list. And a lot of people can imagine that they offer a lot of similarities to say as they're linked to say a lot for a number of reasons. Of course, the owners of each of those companies have a connection with each other. But in addition to that, they are lighter roasting American coffee roasters that utilize the luring. So there are a lot of similarities between these coffee roasters. And I really want to kind of focus on what I've experienced from Flower Child. And it's been a pretty mixed bag as some of the coffees I've had from them have been on the nicer side of things, while some of them have been, I would say, a little under and not to the expectation I did have for them. With that being said, the coffees that we will be reviewing from them coming up here in the near future were definitely the best two coffees that we've ever had from them, which definitely shows that they are improving over time as well. And I really like a lot of the coffees that they do purchase. So I think this is a coffee roaster to keep an eye out for. And I think that they've done a very good job starting off. So for all of those reasons, I do want to place them in the great category. I think that they are on the right trajectory, and I do believe that they are going to be a coffee roaster that continues to improve with time. All right. Next up, we have Hex, based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And Hex is a coffee roaster that I've actually visited out in Charlotte, and I remember visiting them for the first time because I did find their business model to be a very cool one. At the time, they were one of the lighter roasting American coffee roasters out there, and when I went to their shop, I was actually quite impressed by the coffee that they did serve me. And it's been interesting to see what this coffee roaster has done over time. I mentioned that Kova has become a little stagnant, while Hex has definitely embraced a lot of the more modern coffee trends. And that's not necessarily for the best, as I really appreciated a lot of their coffees for being on the cleaner, more washed side of things. But more recently, I've noticed that they've skewed a little bit more on those experimental coffees. And while I've definitely stuck more with their wash processed coffees, I felt that it may not have necessarily been as good as some of the experiences I have had from them in the past. So I do know that they're capable of some really nice things, but my more recent experiences with them and some of the offerings they've had have led me a little bit closer towards the good category as opposed to the great category. So. Once upon a time, I felt like there was some terrific potential within this coffee roaster, and I still feel like it's there. It just has not necessarily gone in the direction that is in line with my own preferences. All right, next up, we have House of Funk, based out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is a very interesting one, as this is a coffee roaster that uh, spun off of a brewery. And I've been to their cafe as well. I guess it's actually still technically a brewery. 
But the first time I ever purchased from them, I purchased a very interesting processed coffee. And it's one of those things that I've noticed from them. And it's that they do also tend to focus on the more processed coffees. But it kind of makes sense given that they are a brewery. And you can see a lot of similarities and traits with their coffees as well as the brewery in general. So that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. That being said, interestingly, I've had more positive experiences with their coffee than it would necessarily lend itself towards believing, given that they are a coffee roaster that on paper shouldn't necessarily be a coffee roaster that I like too much. They tend to skew a little bit too heavily in the more experimental side of their coffees. But with that being said, even some of those more experimental coffees have turned out a little bit better than I was expecting. And for that reason, I've had more positive experiences with them than negative experiences, even though the first time I ever tried them, it didn't necessarily lend itself to the best first impression. So for those reasons, I'm going to put it in the good category, and I think that they are on a pretty good path. And good is a really nice placement for this coffee roaster, given that, once again, they don't really offer a lot of the coffees that I typically tend to go for. So they're doing a very good job with coffees that typically aren't in line with my preferences. All right. Next up, we have Hydrangea Coffee Roasters based out of, I want to say they're out of Berkeley, California. And for the third time in a row, this is a coffee roaster that I purchased a couple coffees from before making this tier list. Unfortunately, I was unable to review those coffees before this tier list came out, so stay tuned for those reviews. But Hydrangea is an extremely interesting coffee roaster for a couple of reasons. Their entire philosophy went against everything that I believe in when it comes to coffee, and that was a very strong focus on processed coffees, where I'm somebody that is pretty opposed to processed coffees in general. So when they first came out, I said, this is a coffee roaster that's definitely not appealing to me. I feel like it's appealing to a much more modern crowd when it comes to coffee in general. So for the first couple of months when this coffee roaster was out, I was kind of keeping an ear to the ground, hearing what people were saying about them, even trying a sample here and there from some people. But I kind of came to the conclusion after the first couple of tries that it just wasn't the coffee roaster for me, mostly because of the, I guess we should say, philosophy that they went with. But that being said, I've noticed a lot of changes over the last couple of months, and I really want to highlight a lot of those positive changes. They have offered a lot more wash processed coffees. There has been improvements to the website, and the bags themselves have also greatly improved. So I've definitely seen significant improvement from this coffee roaster. In addition to that, on paper, if they did a lot more wash processed coffees, then they should be a coffee roaster that I would enjoy a lot more given that they are a probat coffee roaster. So there are a lot of positives that I have taken away from them over the last couple of months, and the coffees that we are in the process of reviewing from them have definitely been on the better side of things as well. They're going to be my two favorite coffees that we've ever had from them. So that leaves them somewhere between the good and great category. Now, before these coffees that we're going to be reviewing from them, they were firmly in the good category for me. I felt like their entire philosophy and some of the coffees we've had from them in the past have been on the better side of things, but not necessarily to the same standard as the great coffee roasters. But more recently, given that we've had much more positive experiences with them, it could go either way. And while I do want to put them in the great category, I still feel like the best place to put them for right now is in the good category, mostly because once again, they're not necessarily in line with my own preferences. But with that being said, I do think that they definitely have great potential based off of the last couple of coffees that we have had from them. All right. Next up is Ilsa, based out of North Canaan, Connecticut. And this is a very interesting one because this is another coffee roaster that featured in our last American and Canadian coffee roaster tier list. And in that tier list, I placed them very high and it was based off of a, just a couple of reviews that we have had from them. And since then, I've tried a lot more of their coffees and that's why it's interesting that I'm going to change their placement from the amazing category to, well, I'll just go ahead and spoil that right now, to the good category. and. A lot of the reason why that's so interesting is because I think that they've actually improved a lot since our first time placing them in this coffee roaster tier list. But what has seemed to change is that my experiences with them have lended myself towards believing that they were never necessarily the type of coffee roaster that I enjoyed to begin with. I just felt like the two coffees that we had reviewed from them were on the more positive side of things relative to the general expectation that I should have from their coffees. That's basically to say that I've had a number of coffees from them recently that I've also had from other coffee roasters, and I significantly enjoyed other coffee roasters' versions of that exact same coffee. 
And in addition to that, I don't necessarily think that their profile is lending itself towards my preferences. So I don't think that they really seem to emphasize or prioritize a lot of these sweeter aspects of their coffees. Because there are a couple of coffees that I had some higher expectations for that didn't necessarily turn out to the level or extent that I was hoping for from them. So for all of those reasons, it is just kind of interesting that the more experience I did get with this coffee roaster, the less I felt like they were for me and in that amazing category. And that's the reason I'm going to bump them down to the good category for right now. We are going to be reviewing more of their coffees in the future, so that's another thing that could change. But it goes to show that sometimes a bit more familiarity with a coffee roaster can give you a much more clear impression and idea of the type of coffees that they offer. All right, next up we have Junto, based out of Taylor's, South Carolina. And this one right here, once again, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. I'm going to place them in the OK category. And we've reviewed a couple of coffees from Junto at this point. They were even featured as one of our coffees of the month. And the thing about Junto is I have not liked any of the coffees that we have reviewed from them up to this point. And if I recall correctly, I believe we've reviewed three of their coffees, one of which being a Gesha Village coffee, which was that coffee of the month. And that one was a coffee that we had also reviewed from Mood Trap. And I loved the Mood Trap version of that coffee so much that it ended up in our top 10 coffees of the year list. Whereas Junto's version of that coffee was one that I didn't even necessarily enjoy showing a vast disparity between the two coffee roasters in terms of my own preference. In addition to that, we tried one of their experimental processed coffees that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And then we also tried a different wash processed coffee that I found to be a little bit on the more tame side of things. So the three coffees that I've had from them, I haven't been the biggest fan of any of those. And as a result, I'm going to place them in the OK category. I'm not entirely sure how a lot of people feel about Junto, as I don't usually hear a whole lot of feedback or reaction about this coffee roaster in general. But for me, they're not necessarily my favorite on this list. All right, next up, we have Luminous, which is based out of Henderson, Nevada. And Luminous is a coffee roaster that we featured on this channel a couple of times. And they're another one of these coffee roasters that seems to have taken a more modern approach to their coffee selection as they've prioritized and emphasized a lot of the, we'll say, fruit processed coffees, the uh, koji processed coffees, just processed coffees in general. So oftentimes when they do their release, I'm not overly interested in the majority of the coffees that they do offer as they do tend to offer so many processed coffees. With that being said, I've been extremely surprised by the wash processed coffees that they have offered, and that's why I wish that they would stick with much more of their wash processed coffees, as the one non-wash processed coffee we had from them I did not enjoy whatsoever, and the two wash processed coffees that we have had from them, both of them have featured at least in the honorable mentions category of our top coffees of the entire year list, both times a Kenyan and a Bolivian coffee. So it goes to show that their wash processed coffees can be really good and really impressive in general. And I wish they would focus maybe a little bit more on those, but I, it's their business and they can run it the way they want, obviously. It's just, once again, not in line with my own preferences. But given just how much I've enjoyed their wash processed coffees, I'm going to put them in the great category as they've done some really nice coffees and I imagine that they will continue to do some great things from this point going forward and I will continue to keep an eye out for their wash processed coffees. All right. And that takes us to our 10th and final coffee roaster in this first part. And that is a Memli based out of, I want to say San Marcos, California. I believe that they've moved around a couple of times in terms of the spot that they're based out of. But this is one of the coffee roasters on this list that I have the least familiarity with as we've only done two full bag reviews of their coffee. And we did it around the time where we released our last American and Canadian coffee roaster tier list. So that one just missed making it onto that list. But it makes it onto this list, though. This is the one that I don't have the most confidence in where I want to place them, as I remember the washed Ethiopian to be a pretty good coffee. And I remember enjoying the Ecuadorian coffee. And I remember them placing pretty well in our blind taste test rankings video. So they did some really nice things. I think the reason I haven't purchased from them more since then is because a lot of the coffees haven't really appealed to me that they have offered. But generally, I've had pretty positive experiences with the first couple of tries that we did have from them. So for that reason, I feel like the best placement for them is going to be in the good category as it's been positive. It just has not necessarily been... I want to say anything that was overly memorable and I have not since revisited them. So that's a placement that could change in the future, but this is our first part as we do have our 10 coffee roasters on this list. And I'm going to leave this part right here for right now. 
As always, I would love some feedback from you guys and would love to hear your thoughts on our placements of these coffee roasters. Anything too high, anything too low. If you have any predictions for where the rest of the coffee roasters are going to place on this tier list, but part two will be coming out tomorrow, so definitely stay tuned for that. But as for right now, this right here has been part one of our updated American and Canadian coffee roaster tier list. Thank you for watching.